I am so glad you've tuned in today. I hope you're in a private place, in a comfortable place, hopefully using earbuds or headphones, because today we are going to rest in the Lord. And that is not a cliche, and it will bring great renewal to your spirit. And it is sorely needed. One of you who was writing in a couple days ago wrote about how when Jesus was in the desert, it was striking that he wasn't doing anything. He wasn't teaching, he wasn't recruiting, he wasn't healing, he wasn't ministering. He was just being with his father and dealing with his temptations. And you were writing, I, I think part of my problem is I go into the desert, but I don't stop. I have these temptations or these issues, but I feel like I got to be super Christian and just power right on through. And this is a huge problem. Fatigue is a huge problem. We're talking about how 2020 is nothing unprecedented, really. Of course, one of the good things is with the pandemic going on and lockdowns and shutdowns, at least we're all staying home and getting a good night's sleep every night, right? Ironically, no, we can't even do that during a pandemic. National Institute of Health did a study early on in the pandemic and found out that our sleep was getting worse. Folks at UC Davis who have been studying sleep in this season say there's actually like corona somnia, where there's an increase in anxiety and worry about what's going on and our sleep is actually deteriorating. And there's this theme in scripture that God loves to give us the gift of sleep. You may have noticed a rhythm in the Bible that the idea of a day in the Bible actually begins in the evening. There's evening and morning the first day, Sabbath, God's great gift for rest for us begins at sundown. And Eugene Peterson says there's a real important theological reason for this. There's a real important theological reason for sleep. And that is that while we're sleeping, God's working. While we're resting, God's working. This is not up to us. And of course, the great good news of Advent is that uh, it's God the one who is doing the work. When the angels come, they do not say, behold, we have good advice for you. Here are more things to do. Unto you is born this day a consultant who will give you lots of things to do. No, no. Uh, we bring good news of great joy. A Savior is born. Advent is about what God is doing primarily, not about what we're doing. And so the Lord gives sleep to those that he loves. And we see this theme in Jesus in very surprising ways. In John chapter 4, we're told Jesus and his disciples had been on a journey and that Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well to rest and the disciples go into town to get food. Now, what kind of a leader does that? When you're a leader, you got to be strong. You got to have more energy than anybody else does. But apparently when Jesus was tired, without apology, even though he was the leader, he just rested. It's the miracle of the incarnation. He became like us. In Mark 4, he and the disciples are in a boat, and there's a storm, and everybody's adrenaline is up, and they're all working really hard, and Jesus is asleep on a cushion, for crying out loud, and they wake him up. And then he would issue invitations to people and say things like this, Come to me, you who are weary and burdened. Is that you? Now we're resting in God right now. Are you weary and burdened? Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Our God is a God who loves to give us rest and loves to do that for our bodies. I've been reading an amazing book, Why We Sleep, about how sleep is something far more than just a period of unconsciousness. It has these remarkable benefits. It makes you less likely to die soon, less likely to have a stroke or cancer. Uh, it makes you more creative. Your brain is actually at work while you are sleeping to sever some neural connection so that things that are not important or painful become forgotten or lose the uh, painful emotion attached to them. And then to integrate other neural connections so that your brain is actually solving problems and becoming more creative. Sleep's an unbelievable gift from God. And we're not in charge of it. We don't do it. It comes often against our will. But it's not just... Uh, sleep for our body that God wants to give us. One of the most important passages for me in this last year has been 2 Corinthians chapter 4, where Paul says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, inwardly 
we're being renewed day by day. And God wants to renew you. There is an outer you, but there is an inner you. There is an outer reality that is seen, and then there is an inner reality that is invisible. And there's a very big theme in the Bible. What we do not see is far more important than what we do see. Beginning with God. Romans 1.20 says that the invisible qualities of God, his eternal power and divine nature, are clearly seen in that which he has made, creation. And likewise, there's an invisible side to you and to me. I have a mind, I have thoughts, and I have desires, and I have intention. And it is possible for those to be renewed day by day while the outward me is wasting away. And there have been times when I've just written down the outward me. My job, my appearance, my age, my income, my reputation, my uh, relationships with other people, all kinds of dimensions of my life that are wasting away. And yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, inwardly, I am being renewed. I have experienced this. God being present with me. God bringing me rest when I'm exhausted. God telling me that he loves me. God telling me that I do not have to be afraid. God promising that he will go with me. God reminding me that life is very short and it will soon be over. And if I endure with him, it is he and not me who will set everything right. At Christmas, we remember the angels did not come with good advice and a consultant who will give you with lots of good things to do. They came with good news of a savior. And he's the one that's setting everything right. So now I want to invite you to stop and rest in God. Take a moment and uh, sit up straight. Put your feet flat on the floor. You're in no hurry right now. Allow your body to be fully relaxed because you're gonna rest body, soul, spirit in Him. Take a deep breath. And remember now that is Ruah, that is the spirit breath, that is the gift of God that is pumping vitality into you at every level. And then take a moment to breathe out whatever is toxic, fear, anger, resentment, ego. And then breathe in love. Breathe in peace. And I want to pray over you, for you, with you, a wonderful prayer. It's called the morning prayer, and it's from Alcoholics Anonymous. And I very often use this in the morning so that I can be resting in God through the day. And here it is. I'll, I'll offer it to you. You pray it in your spirit and then take this with you into the day. Direct my thinking, God, so that it is divorced from self-seeking, dishonesty, self-pity, self-will, and fear. Inspire my thoughts, decisions, and intuitions. Help me to relax and take it easy. Free me from doubt and indecision. Guide me through the day. Show me my next step. Give me whatever I need to solve any problems. I ask this, that I might be of maximum service to you and my fellow human beings. And I pray and live and rest in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.